everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome to Biomutants, the game that everybody's been asking whether or not I'm going to play it, and the game that I've been kind of, uh, I'm not going to say on the fence about it. I actually played this a couple of years ago, and I thought it was neat, uh, but I don't think it ever really earned the level of hype that it, it received leading into it. But I guess today, we're going to find out whether or not it lives up to the hype, is a good game, and uh, I'm just going to play on medium. I don't know. It's it's one of those like weird oddities that I think people are going to either get really into, or it's going to have enough rough edges that uh, nobody's going to be that... I'm not going to say excited for it. Ooh. I don't know. It... And a lot of it always, uh, like, a lot of the hype going into this, or beforehand, kind of reminded me of the, oh, jeez, the cyberpunk craze, where everybody was just like, oh, you know, cyberpunk's gonna be amazing, and then it was kind of okay, and I feel like that's gonna be where this is. Okay, so we should probably take a look at these. So Primal is a nimble, developed, anthropomorphic breed. Okay, so hybrid, more dexterous, less brain. I guess you can see that right there. A little bit more energy regen. Okay. Dum Dum is least developed anthropomorphic breed. Uh, let's see. So, low brain. Uh, let's see. Interestingly enough, it doesn't actually look like it reduces it that much. Uh, let's see. Low brain, high strength, which is true. Oh, do I have to? Oh, no. I have to confirm. Okay. Hybrid with even casing, so it's kind of decent across the board. Regenerative. Extremely tough and resilient. Interesting. I don't see anything about it actually gaining HP back. Let's see. If I do stat details... Ah, here we go. So we can see all of these. But it doesn't seem like any of these have anything to do with actual HP regen. Yep. Okay. So the one thing I was going to say is it's kind of tempting to go with a Murgle. If only because uh, it's got 2% extra loot chance and better barter. No idea if that's any good. It looks like it comes with some heavy heavy hits to power, key regen, and energy regen. Uh, but I think I, I think I want to go with a Murgle anyway. I mean, there's also the FIP, but the, something about the FIP just makes me deeply uncomfortable. I think it's just the tiny dot eye that's just incredibly uncomfortable. Okay. Define your character's starting attributes. Oh. Define your genetic structure. What if what if I just went all in on barter? <laughs> oh. Uh. 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 This is just disconcerting to behold. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Look at it. It's a chihuahua. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh. Bit. 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 What? Bit. Encode your DNA. Oh, does randomize just pick between one of the random ones? Alright, what about FIP? What if I do things with the FIP? It's this is frankly disturbing to behold. <laughs> he just looks so done with life. Like, look at this dude. He's like, I don't want to be here any more than you do. Can I just go home? I don't want this. Uh, that said, melee damage just full on ninety six, dead to the world, and everything is dead around him. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Who? <laughs> His face is like hella flat. What else we got out of this? Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! Orb! Orb! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> all right. Let's keep looking. But that's that's a ranker. I think uh, to some degree it is really tempting to just pick my character entirely based on what makes him the most code, absolutely your horrid. No. 
Yes, I'm inbred. Don't look at me like that. Oh, wow. Do not feed this thing after midnight. It will go badly for you. Ugh. 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 Uh, yeah, I mean, it's got kind of a bunny thing going on, but just the way it kind of morphed into that was just really weird. Like, that's actually not terrible. Okay, I don't think I'm getting anything Encode truly amazing out of Rex. Define your genetic structure. Oh, wow, look. It's... It's Spackwolf. <laughs> I actually kind of like the look of this guy. Like, it's not amazing, but... He's just got kind of like a a bestial nature to it. <laughs> and this is his incredibly inbred third cousin twice uh, removed. Does he have like weird bug legs? No, maybe that's just what they're used to. Gosh, I don't think. And then the, this is their this is their son. Oh. Look at him, he's so sad! Third cousin once removed, and also brother. So many of these are actually just weirdly sad. And so many of these, oh gosh, it looks like a Psychonaut character. <laughs> Alright, what else do we got? Do we have any weird, weird mutations just kind of lurking around here? <laughs> gosh, that is just super Encode. weird. Define your genetic structure. Hey, look. It's like a weird knockoff version of the character from Tunic. <laughs> Somebody's been feeding me too many donuts. Alright. Uh, that Encode said... Your DNA. I think, was it Define this guy? Your genetic structure. Oh my god! Wait, this is different. This is not the guy that I was expecting to find here. I... Was it this dude that was the orb? Or was this... A, is this a different variant? Encode your DNA. Define your genetic. Encode your. Define your genetic. Encode your. De define your genetic structure. Wait. Encode your DNA. Define your genetic. Structure. It's random. Every time I load into this, it's totally random. <laughs> Check that dude out. He's just tall. But yeah, no, the uh, the the random generation is just totally random. Like what you get. Uh, there's no no real sense of, like, consistency. Oh my god. Hello. Yes. I am Brain. Because, yeah, we can, we can go down here and it'll have a different result kind of every single time. Encode okay, so let's go back to the Murgle in that case. Structure. Encode your define your genetic Yeah, can structure. I get a Murgle Encode that define your goes genetic. big head? Encode define your genetic structure. Not really. So it looks like if I want to go big structure. orb. Huh. Well, that's slightly different. And he's got the schnoz. There we go. Charisma 100. Look at this guy. Can we get an I Make Monsters episode out of this? Gosh, I don't even know. Like, the problem is there's nothing I can do. Do I think? Choose a genetic resilience. Okay, so this has nothing, nothing to do here. Look at the right hand. Oh gosh. Oh. Okay. I don't really know if any of these matter. Uh, so I'm going all in on biohazard. Look, I'd rather Choose be very resistant style. to one. Okay, customize my fur. Hey, it's all over the place. I think the biggest issue with me doing an I Make Monsters is I can't save any of it. So it's kind of, that's, that's some Kratos right there. Gosh. We just, for a person that has a charisma of 100%, this guy looks like he hates everyone. 
Maybe the thing is, he's such a smooth talker and everybody likes him, but when it boils down to it, he likes no one. That said, I don't think I'm actually going to play as this. I love the idea of a 21% barter and maybe charisma is actually useful. But I know combat's supposed to be like a big Choose section a of this. So we're going to we're going to go back. Define your is it? Code your DNA. Uh, let's see. Define your genetic structure. Encode define your genetic structure. <laughs> Encode define your genetic structure. I could also just hit random, but I don't want to do that. Oh dude, look, it's tough squirrel. I feel, I feel like, honestly, considering this game's proclivity for uh, combat... Uh, oh heck, I sent it at 69. Welcome, Rito. Welcome to whatever the hell this is. Creature, creature. It... nothing seems Encodial. to matter. Define your genetic structure. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just backing out and it gives me something different every single time. Encodial. Every single Define time. Your genetic structure. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> is he okay? No. I don't think he is. Look at how angry he is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Holy shit. Do we, do we just, he knows too much and he doesn't like it. All right. Well, I guess we're going to have to use special abilities. I, do we keep going? The problem is I can't really save this stuff. So I could keep this guy. I kind of want to keep this guy. Uh, yeah, sure. Fine. Resilience. Choose your first style. What is his first style? I just... I don't know. I don't know if there's enough good options here. Let's go with that. That just makes him Okay, there's a customiz customization option later in the game. This is just purely for stats. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. What color do I want this this schmecko to be? Like, I feel like, I feel like hot pink kind of works. Pink and grumpy? Sure. Orange and pink? Choose your detail color. Alright. Gosh, this is terrifying to behold. Uh... Pick your main color. Go back. Choose your detail color. Go... You want to try, like, Wonderbot colors here? I mean, we could. That actually doesn't look half bad, at least color-wise. Pick a class. Okay, Command. dead eye. Commando. Cypher. I guess I don't need to say these things. Sentinel. <laughs> um. I just. I know he's supposed to be. I think the tank, but uh, just the the look on his face comboed with that Saboteur. stupid hat. Cypher. Okay. Well, I think we're gonna just go Psy Freak. Freak chosen. Let's just Sounds good. Let's go with this. We'll see how this goes. Here's somebody with a troubled past, drawn into the spotlight of a story that's already begun. We're already at a crossroads. Choosing a path in life is that fork in the road where you make a choice or simply stop living. But for you, it's not only a crossroad, but a choice. A reflection of your key, the primal energy that flows through everything. So, dark red, strength and power, or light blue, freedom and loyalty. Sith! Allow me to introduce myself. I'm the dark side of you. Your inner voice, to be precise. An echo of the balance and consequence of your actions as you move forward. So glad you realized who you really are. Let's keep to the bright and better path moving on. You can't contradict yourself like that. You made the right choice to begin with. Why would you change your mind? Because you can't deny what's deep within your heart. 
Sometimes a thought is just a thought. In the end, it's the way you act that counts. But remember, this is just the beginning of the end. Eventually, it'll be my way or the highway. Can I go back? Aura, somewhat dark. Okay, cool. Guess left can be right, sometimes. Can I break these? Okay, so I have karate moves. What is that? Looks like a re reload. Where am I going? What am I doing? What is any of Stories this? Stories of death and the bodies left behind. A reminder that we're at the mercy of nature and the one that preys on others. What's that move? I have no idea. What is this? I don't know. Oh, that might Do be a special move. you remember the beast that shattered your family? Or did you choose to forget? You turned your back on our world and got lost in your own. Meanwhile, the predator only grew stronger. This is really strange. I'm like a bizarre bobblehead just running around. <laughs> Never mind. Not strange. Pretty cool with these options. Okay. Monkey roll. Oh. Okay. Okay, Phoenix Flight. Oh. Well, I tried to melee him. All right, so you can parry. That's really awkward. Well, it looks like parrying is on the menu. Did I? I, <laughs> this is weird. What happened? I like had a slow-mo where I just instant, oh. This is not the time nor place to end this story. But how? But how? But how, in fact? There we go. That was... That seems wildly unsafe. Hello, yes, I'm going to use a sea mine as a flail. What... What are we doing? This Hopefully the ability system is decent. To run and live to fight another day. Let us hope you're ready for it when it comes. Like a bizarro big-headed squirrel. Okay, I uh, can I change my character appearance at a later date? Because the predator isn't the only threat. The wildlife started to mutate when the end of days began, and the tree of life started to die. Okay, can evolution gone wrong? Okay, melee targeting. Move towards an enemy to target them with melee attacks. Aim the camera towards the enemy to target them with ranged attacks. Reload range weapon right bumper. Use an ability, press the button it's bound to while pressing left trigger. To throw a sparkling ball of key energy, the damage on the enemy that hits. Mutation select. Ah, uh, cool. And key energy is used for dodging, using mutations, and special attacks. When you're out of key energy, you'll be unable to perform these actions. Okay, regenerates in and out of combat. Hello! Wow. Honestly, what a blow. Not necessarily feeling the special abilities as much, but maybe I just need more big moves. Or maybe I just need to spam fire them. Oh, they're cheap. That's the deal. That's why I want to do it. All right, do we get anything cool off of you? The answer is no, at least not currently. Well, is there a reason to explore in here? Doesn't look like it. Hello, what do we have here? What do you have for me?
We got a shmurb. We found a weapon special effect add-on. Attached to your ranged weapon, give it extra damage type for as long as the ammo lasts. Some enemies have a resistance or weakness. Okay. I guess I'll equip it. So it's it's a consumable item. I was hoping it would just be a cool weapon mod. Okay, medical bag. Health doesn't automatically regenerate in combat. You'll have to use consumables or find other ways to heal. Alright, take all. Boy, there's a lot of a lot of tutorialization. Uh anything interesting? Toilet. Are you serious? Oh, okay, I got a toilet medical patch. That seems wildly unsafe. Oh sweet, gamer. Doesn't look like there's anything else. We This is weird. It's just the tutorial lasts twenty to thirty minutes. That is at least ten minutes too long, if not longer. The oil sludge is everywhere. To most, it only means death, but some have adapted to the new environment and changed with it. Evolution has its ways. Okay, remember to parry enemy attacks. Okay. That didn't quite work. Get rid of him. Now, I think I can parry this guy. There we go. Honestly, I kind of wish I had just gone for full melee. It feels like full melee would have been more powerful. Fallen enemies can often be looted for healing items. Okay. The other option that I could have gone for would be, would have just been go hard on, uh, on luck for bonus loot. Okay, explore the sludge room. Why? But I came from there. No, I didn't come. I came from over there. Yeah, I did just start. We'll we'll see as we go along. I just always second guess my character build. I probably should have gone for like a full, uh, a full generous generalist build. Okay, this game desperately needs like a full on lock on. I like the the kind of temp lock on that they've got. Oh, he just dead. Okay, and he just stunned. Oh, any the. Ow. Uh. It really does seem like parrying is just kind of obscene. Though, kind of floaty. Wow, okay, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. The story's only long because of story progression. That's fair. I just, uh... I have begun to develop a, I'm, I'm not going to say it an all-consuming all hatred for lengthy tutorials, but they've, I found them to be kind of disappointing lately. Uh, too many games have had me learning for, you know, way too long and not really getting on with themselves. And so whenever I hear like, it's got a half hour tutorial, I'm like, oh good. And maybe that's just because I determined much of my gameplay time in terms of like YouTube videos, uh, which probably isn't the best way of, like, perceiving things, but it's kind of hard to separate, you know, what I do for a living versus... Okay, that dude's got... Okay, shielder, carry large shields, you need to break shields with melee attacks before you can deal damage to the enemy. Well, that hurt. Okay. Is he just dead? I have no idea. Well, break it with melee attacks, they say. Now, is that... Okay, that's just random crafting loot that rolled right in. I don't know. Maybe the... Maybe I'll be fine. We'll see how it goes. Leveling up. Defeating enemies and completing quests will give you XP. Leveling up get, allows you to raise one of your attributes by 10. You also get a point that you can unlock skills in Wang Fu and perks. Got it. Okay, so I guess it doesn't matter. Worst comes to worst, I can just uh, respec slowly anyway. Can I break these? I can. Perfect. Let's see. How do we how do we level up? Character. Aura. Okay. 
Increasing attributes. When you level up, you can increase an attribute of your choice by 10. Pick which attribute you want to increase from the list. I mean, I could just keep pumping intellect and just be absolute brain boy forever. It's not the worst idea in the world. Let's see, agility, that is a small amount of move speed. The other option is we just pump a lot of points into luck, just to see if I can get my loot chance to actually be something reasonable. Let's see, some extra vitality. Maybe. What do you guys think? Absolute brain boy, or... I'm feeling luck mainly for the loot chance. Looks good. Let's see if we can get it to the point where it starts um, hitting diminishing returns. Okay, you learn upgrade points when leveling up. Can be used to acquire special attacks and perks. Time to unlock your first basic special attack. Ranged combat. Guns. No. Close combat. Un unarmed? No. Crane dance. Finish your melee chain by fan firing your gun. No. Close combat. Unarmed. Unspeakable hand. Do I not? Can I not? Okay, so I guess I can't get any more spells. That's fine. I guess I'll do Unspeakable Hand. You can now perform your special attack when you have the correct weapon type equipped. Uh, this is unarmed. So, once it, once you've unlocked more attacks, you'll be able to combine them to reach the Super Wang Fu state. Cool. I don't think I'm reaching that state. I don't think this guy is capable of anything but grump. Once you have more upgrade points, remember to spend them on perks. Got it. Cool. Hooray. I've done it. I've become more powerful. Is there anything fancy over here? Nope, of course not. Equip thine hands. Look, an emergency box from the once was. A rare sight. Alright, Old World Crowbar. Rarity common. Cool. Oh, I see, to get in that other door. But what about... No, that's a locker. A locker with nothing in it. Oh, I'm digging the visuals. Like, this, lo this looks visually quite nice. And the combat, that while it lacks... Looks weak. The claw bar should come in handy. Well, while the combat looks kind of floaty and heftless... It almost feels like Whoa. I'm more watching somebody fight than I'm actually fighting it's time myself. To find a way out of this place. No, really, I mean it. Okay. Who's the narrator for this? Is it the Stanley Parable guy? It certainly sounds like it is. Well, that looks spooky. Biomatter in their multi-organ that they shed under distress, blobs that affect the cellular coding strands of any living being when abs. Okay, you're on your way to performing a special attack. They're prompted in the bottom right corner of the screen. Cool, including you. Okay, this. This. All right. Credit where credit is due. I can just... I can just be tossing those out left and right. Ow. It really does seem like parrying is the way to go. Yeah, every once in a while, I see a, like, a left bumper icon pop up next to one of these guys. Or is it left trigger? I have no idea. I mean, the aerial combos are solid. <sighs> and you know what? There we go. Problem solved. You've absorbed a biolob. These are points used to unlock mutations. You collect biolobs by defeating morks and finding containers at very various places in the world. You can use your biolobs to unlock special powers at any time by accessing the mutations part of the menu. All right, I'm getting it. It really does feel like melee combat right now is. I do anything with you? Like that seems like the kind of thing you'd want to set on fire and get rid of. But no, our character is just like, all right, sweet, I'll come back later for you. 
I find it easier to play with keyboard and mouse. Yeah, I might try that. But no, it feels like playing this game... It almost feels like the uh, the Marvel Spider-Man game, but it has a lot more buttons and like things that you can kind of do, but in a way that feels weirdly unfamiliar. Toxanol built vessels called arcs to save themselves from the impending doom. But was it too late? It is only from the flight logs of the single arc they left behind that we know other arcs traveled through the sky and beyond. It seems those that came before us never lost hope in finding a new home for their kind. Oh, found a puzzle. These are scattered around the world. Some open new paths, while others feature different rewards. To switch which node is selected, use left stick. Rotate. Cool. This is the number of rotations you have left. The higher your intellect, the more moves you have. Well, luckily my intellect is pretty dang high. Each node has a certain position it must be rotated to complete the puzzle. Running out of moves before they may, uh, before that may have consequences. Oh. Just a few moves left. Make them count. Oh. Okay, I get it now. Can I do it again? Ah, there we go. Let's see. There we go. That makes a lot more sense. I just wasn't sure what I was looking at or, like, what I was supposed to move. Well, that's fine. There are few records of the chain of events that led to the big apocalypse eons ago, but it's clear the world wasn't prepared for how recklessly the Toxinol Corporation would make its mark on the world. Their rare earth mining and nuclear industries generated tons of waste and, without consideration for the future, they dumped it all in landfills until they ran out of space. That's when they made the big mistake. They began dumping the toxic waste in the surf just off the coast instead, assuming that it would sink and decay with time. And they were right. But no one was prepared for what was about to unfold. Once in the surf, the radiation interfered with the genetics of the wildlife and created bizarre mutations in their offspring. It had an inconceivable impact on biodiversity and the entire ecosystem. The world as they knew it crumbled as nature retaliated. It would never be the same again, and what remained of it became ours. So it's us. We all kind of knew it. I don't know. It's kind of a decent background. Background? I don't know. Sound of spark metal going pew pew is never a good thing. It's coming from behind that door. So we're not on Earth? A eh. warning label. The box looks like a potential brain melt. We probably are on Earth. It's going to take a bit of puzzling to short circuit the door. Oh. Yeah, that's barely anything. I didn't even see the pipes. But I'm pretty sure this is still Earth. Hey, I think yeah. the humans are just gone. All right. Most of the humans are just gone. Perfectly countering an enemy attack will stun them. A stunned enemy has stars circling their head and... And after hitting the enemy again, you can launch it up in the air by pressing left bumper. The wheeled one is outnumbered. You'd better help him out. Unfortunately, my melee is bad. Okay. 
There we go. He gone. Anybody else want to hit me? There we go. Interestingly enough... There we go. There we go. Interestingly enough, I don't have to press the bumper. I can actually just press Y, and it'll do the same effect. Yeah, hopefully I can turn my lightning move to have, like, a chain lightning effect or something in the future. But, like, I will say, it seems like melee, especially right now, has just uh, the, the superior effectiveness. Because, like, this move is really good and comes with an AoE to it. Oh, he ain't dead yet. That's the last There we go. Let's talk to the wheeled one before backup arrives. Yeah, left bumper is different. Both toss him up in the air. Uh, the thing is, you can just do the XXY and have it work anyway. I don't know. I'm thinking in terms of, like, action optimization that, from my perspective, I might as well just mash XXY over and over again, regardless of whether or not I get that stun. Because it has the same effect and requires me to not monkey finger around constantly. Is there something I can climb with this? There's rope as though I could. Maybe that's how we get out of here. Hello? He wants to thank you for taking his side against the scavengers. He sounds familiar. You just can't figure out why. He presents himself as out of date. He knows he's way overdue, but he hasn't given up. He doesn't seem surprised that you don't recognize him. You were just a child back then. The night everything changed. There have been rumors of a one-eyed Ronin seen outside the Great Wall, and he's happy to see it's true. The legend of the one-eyed child that grew up as an outcast is old and sad. The child could have been anyone, but the evil it had fled had left a mark, a facial scar to remember the past. The scar? It's a scar you're covering under that eye patch, isn't it? But he would have recognized you anyways. You look exactly like your Muma. There's no doubt you're the child and that what Lupa Lupin did to your village, your Mooma and Popsy, was the beginning of the end. He says it has taken you a long time to bring the past back up to the present, to find your way back, but he's grateful you have. It was after the attack that the unity fell apart. Your Mooma's disciples divided, and formed tribes as a reaction to the blight that had fallen upon the land. So I guess we were the child of whatever the leader system, uh, leaders of their society were. I don't know. I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm lost, but this this weird narration system, I'm just is bouncing off of me. After the old village was destroyed and you disappeared. A struggle between the families erupted, and over time, the disciples turned against each other. Had it not been for the Tree of Life, no one would have survived. He hopes you at least remember the tree. Let's see. By default, dialogues are set to advance from one NPC line to the next automatically. If you want to manually advance... Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, it's hard to see, but I am just as grumpy of a child as I am as an, adu an, adu uh, as an adult. Now, here's the question. Did they actually make it so... Oh, my God. 
Asks if you were tired, as it's a bit of a hike here from the village. He wonders if your Mooma knows you are here. I don't think she cares. Sounds like he thinks she does, despite your heart growing dark. There's nothing as powerful as a Mooma's love. He understands why you came all the way out here to see them, the potato people. What? The potato people, or Nono, are a wonder somehow interlinked with this little tree here fueling its source of life. No, no. Potato people is better. <laughs> you might be right. Like potatoes, they're packed with energy, an excellent source of key. <laughs> the Nono prefer to hide in glitter grass. He says you should get over there and ruffle it. See if you can make one come out of hiding. Oh my gosh. It, you're right. This is out of date. But when out of date was... This. Rockabilly? Is that correct? Hell if I know. Boy, howdy. Did we finish the tutorial? No, nah, we're very much still in the tutorial. But now we're in the tutorial as an ugly, ugly grump child. <laughs> I just want to see if I can make my ugly grump child with big head also have big body for no good reason. I just want to have ugly big child. Oops. Swimming is bad, okay? get tired swimming. You found one. You should be proud. They don't come out for everyone. <laughs> the Nono's key energy is just what the Pensai needs to complete its cycle and grow into a tree of life. What, Pensai? <laughs> the small tree you saw up there where you met will eventually grow into a tree of life and start giving back to nature. It'll be the heart of the land. <laughs> You'll need to support the tree for a long time to come. The only way it'll grow tall is with the burst of key released from the Nono as they become one with the tree. You'll need a net to catch the Nono, and he wants you to use his, but asks you to be gentle. The Nono are sensitive beings, an embodiment of Ki, the primal energy. <laughs> I do not want to be here. You handle that net like you've never done anything else. He's impressed. <laughs> He's grateful for all the help he can get. There's lots of Nono out there that need to be guided to the roots of the Pensai tree. I... The way they voice acted best before is amazing. Because he absolutely has that, like, that rocker tonality to him. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's... It's so good. Oh, it'll need a continuous flux of key over the 20, 12 months to come, so... Countless, he'd say. <laughs> One day, he hopes the tree will have grown tall enough to sustain the world. But... Today, your focus is getting this one to become one with the tree. Okay, back up we go. Wait. Oh, there we go. I do like the running animations and everything. Like, this is a nice looking game. It's nice and colorful. And it's like, the environments are weird. Weird in a way that most Poke, uh, Poke Apocalypse, Poke Apocalypse, gosh, I'd love to play a post-apocalyptic Pokemon game. Anyway, post-apocalyptic media is usually just kind of like dreary and rusty and sad all the time. 
This is maybe sad all the time, but at least it's colorful. Damn. Now that you've seen the Nono's connection with the tree with your own eyes, you have no reason to doubt. <laughs> From this day on, he'll make nurturing the Pensai into a tree of life, a life goal, not only for our village's sake, but for all of us, everyone. <laughs> One day, the land won't be as peaceful. Not even your Mooma will be able to protect us. <laughs> you can already see the effects from how reckless those before us acted, and unless something changes, we're doomed. The land won't survive the side effects of the old world's industrial advances. <laughs> He says you'd better hurry back to the village before your Mooma comes looking for you. You did good here today. She only cares about Wang Fu. Wang Fu. <laughs> That's not true. She's the reason there's still unity, and the only one strong enough to keep the six Wang Fu disciples disciplined. <laughs> he lost you there for a while. But no memory is alone. It's part of a trail you can follow. He says he remembers every single day he devoted to growing the Tree of Life, but now he's afraid it might be in vain. The tree started to die when the end of days begun, and it wasn't long after that that the World Eaters arrived. World Eaters? The genetic evolution that occurred after the apocalypse that Toxinol Corporation inflicted on the land set the World Eaters' DNA into overdrive. His friend Gizmo is working on a Mekton and needs help defeating the Jumbo Puff at the end of the West Route. Wiz is still repairing his octopod to confront the murk puff that dwells deep down under the surface at the end of the northwest route. Noko has tamed the midget and is preparing to take on the hoof puff at the end of the east route. Finally, Goop is almost done with the goo glide a machine able to ride the waves of the surf all the way out to the Porky Puff at the end of the route to the southeast. <laughs> out of date, says his friends, are gearing up to stop the World Eaters. There's one at the end of each route. <laughs> the road ahead won't be easy, but he's counting on your support. His friends aren't strong enough to end this on their own. He wants you to understand that you'll all die if the tree isn't saved. Porky Puff? He claims names have power, so he gave them these names to weaken them. For him, the Porky Puff is particularly personal. It was that carnivorous beast that took his leg. Miami. Regardless, you'll meet again once you've played your part in the tribe war and the situation with the World Eaters. We got the rod net. Cool. He lives here with his giant blue pumpkins and whatever these things are. They look concerning. Gosh. Well, now it. Also, we murdered a lot of people. You're getting the hang of it. Like, I didn't really. Wait, didn't I close this door? Why not just use the wheel? Well, I'm gonna break things, aren't I? The quickest way out is through the roof where they came in, and the rope looks strong enough to climb. Okay. I. Boy, this tutorial is. Wait. 
Oh, I thought it was going to gain EXP for every bit of climbing that I was doing. It's like, that's different. I've seen some games do that, but it's real odd. And we murdered a lot of scavengers there, but we didn't hear anything about why they were trying to murder him. All know right, this looks that nice. The tree of life is dying. Its days are numbered. Without help, it can't endure the environmental change and assault from the world eaters. Well, that's a. Uh... I got a couple things to say. The the writing is neat. Nice. I like the idea of it, but a lot of the words, you know, the porky puff and the gloop clap and the w whiz wang, and you're just like a signpost maps it out for the cartographically challenged. It it feels like I'm I'm hearing a language that they just randomly replaced a couple of words because they're like, what's an alternate word for boat? I are you kidding me? Let's see. <laughs> of course. Signposts are found near locations of interest all around the world. You unlock a signpost when interacting with it. You can fast travel to a signpost you've unlocked by selecting on the map. Cool. All right. Uh, but like the writing and the the lore, actually not bad. I just wish they had leaned in harder to the like switching words around, or something. Cause yeah, it it absolutely just feels like what's another word for sword? Uh, Sharpie slicey. It's like, uh, well, I guess sure. Why not? Also, pretty sure that's a world leader. Damn. That's a fuzzy bugger. That must be the world eater that chewed off out of date's leg. You'll need a hat trick to bring that down. I am pretty quick the at world identifying. have made their marks on our world over time. Uh, let's see. Hello. I found a health patch in this shit pile. You know, that just seems terribly wrong. I was really hoping for a more interesting secret out of that. That's not the first nor the last village it'll leave in its wake. Okay, examine the village. Were there any survivors? Probably not. Look, a survivor. Glad to see someone made it out alive. Not for long. You. Bam! Oh. He's heard the stories about the terror inflicted by the world eaters to other enclaves, but never expected one to come all the way here. Your inner balance is two halves that completes a wholeness that flows through all things. At times you will be able to manifest your inner balance through deeds and dialogue choices. Few are those who always act in the same manner, and our wholeness is the sum of the choices that we make and the actions we take. Okay, so it's just renegade, but not quite. He worries there won't be much left to save if this continues, even if the Tree of Life survives the attack. He doesn't know what your connection is to this place, but something tells him you've stayed true to your heart. <laughs> side points. Interacting with captives and side shrines will allow you, uh, award you with side points that you can use to unlock psionic powers. Oh, powers can only be unlocked once you've reached the required darker light inner balance. Anyway, he needs help and says it's by your actions you'll be judged, not by your intentions. I realized that I was going to kind of go dark side just because I'm a grump, but like, I always hate these options where it's just like, nope, see you sucker. And it's like, no, of course I'll help. But it's very heavy-handed. He's grateful for that. You still seem to have a spark of light in you. <gasps> Is that it? That's a spark of light in you! Too much already? That's right. Smack that spark out before it starts. You don't have to be so harsh. It's such a little spark. Take it out now while it's small. <laughs> There's always another spark. Do I get dark tendency for that just by saying no? You've gained a side point. Use it to unlock powers in the mutations menu. Some powers are locked by aura score, meaning your side points can only unlock powers of the same color of your current aura. Okay. 
I just absolutely hate the light lady's voice. There's out of date again. He must have missed something important. How did he get out of there? With the wheelchair. <laughs> out of date knows you'll make a better stand against the world eaters with the support of a tribe. And there's two nearby. The Jagni tribe is likely to be your primary choice as they seek to become omnipresent and most importantly, feared. Regardless of who you choose, it won't be easy, as the conflict between the tribes is worse than ever, teetering on the brink of war. The Myriad's conviction to stop the World Eaters began when the Leviathans rose from the depths of the surf. Siding with the Myriad's movement for wholeness in a fragmented world might seem like the logical thing to do, but is it the right thing? One thing's certain, though. Destiny arrives all the same. The Jagni tribe only ever had one conviction, to bring balance to the world by wiping out the weak. They believe a cleansing is necessary to restore the world and want to let the world eaters bring down the tree of life. But siding with Chagney isn't necessarily a bad thing. Fate will find a way. You know, yeah. move forward, bro. Boom. out of date says someone needs to break the stalemate and shift the balance of power to either Jagney's or Myriad's side. You want to look up. Yeah, move forward, bro. Boom. He believes the tribe Sifus, Jagni especially, will listen to you and expects you to pay at least one of them a visit and play your part. Are the tribes engaged the world eaters? In Jagni's case, letting the world eaters bring down the tree of life is part of their plan. They believe a cleansing is the only way the world can be saved. He'll be waiting for you beneath the tree of life if you lose track of what you need to do. Regardless, you'll meet again once you've played your part in the tribe war and the situation with the world eaters. Your current journal started quests. Cool. Are these the only two tribes? Do I have to? I guess I have to. That kind of sucks. Another fork in the road. It's either the tunnel or the motor bridge. What'll it be? Aura, still somewhat dark. All right. You yeah, have to choose one of the two, but there are other tribes after. Figured. Okay. Well, one way or another, I was... My original plan was play this for a bit, get a proper impression of this game. I get the distinct feeling I'm not going to be able to do that without actually sitting down and playing more of this. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Which is, in fact, actually a terrible idea, and I should have never done it. This game is not good. This is It's not good. Um, I'm just going to own that right now. Before we talk about this a little bit. So I'm going to do a, a micro review and then I'm going to actually put something together over up on Wanderbot Prime. Um, which might actually go up in a couple hours. I'm just probably going to speed through it a little bit. But Biomutant is a game that has potential. It has promise. But most of all it has rough edges. It looks lovely. This world is neat to explore. There's so many, like, just cool vistas and things to look at that it actually is, like, kind of a neat game to just travel around. The problem is there's nothing actually in it. Uh, I think actually read it about this moment or something like that. I was making a comment about how I, uh, when I was doing the, the recording of this, I was commenting that this game makes me want to go play Fallout 76. And to some degree, maybe that's not bad. Maybe Fallout 76 is is actually better now. I really should go back and give it a shot. But at least based on what I know of Fallout 76, if a game makes me want to play Fallout 76, that's not a good sign. I love the ideas of this. Uh, this is my Psy ability that lets me effectively shoot magic missiles, and I found out that it's, like, totally busted. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but I can just run circles and just shoot magic missiles at things endlessly until they die. It's great. 
Uh, I've heard guns are good, but unfortunately, because I was playing with a controller, aiming is awful, and so I decided I'd just stick, stick mostly to side powers, and it, it worked out for the most part for me right now, and if I were to keep playing this, I'd probably play keyboard and mouse and try and play it as a third-person shooter. But, like, these enemies that we are fighting here pretty much represent half of the enemies that are available in the game. You got the big dudes with the, with charges, and he had a shield for a bit, but he lost it. You got the little dudes with swords, you got the little dudes with guns, and you've got big quadruped quadrupedal monsters, and then there's, like, a couple other types. But, like, it's such a meaninglessly small amount of variety that it just doesn't feel like anything, which is sad because, like, I wanted to like this game. I want to like this game. It looks great. Big Al. Uh, it's like the biggest hit I've taken in the game, and I'm not sure why. Like, all these other guys can hit me, and, like, I'll just tank it, but the moment that moose hits me, it's just oof. Um, anyway, effectively, this is what I came down, came down to when it came to, like, fighting things, is just use magic missile and disregard anything else, because everything else just wasn't worth it. The melee combat is great in the beginning, but all the enemies just kind of... It's hard to parry them, and it's equally hard to dodge them, because their animations are kind of all over the place. And so I just eventually bailed on that, unless I was fighting one individual small dude at a time. Because otherwise, it, just, it equally wasn't safe, and mostly I just get stunlocked, which wasn't very fun. And so I just kind of lost interest in doing it. Because this worked better. I mean, look at that. Except for getting, you know, absolutely walloped by the moose once. That was it. Speaking of looking at this, got walloped by a turbo moose and I got some candy. Not very interesting. And from him, I got a common, lousy, rock-coated hat that is way worse than what I have. Mind you, these guys are twice my level and are the hardest thing I've objectively fought in the game. And then, I open up this armchair and find one of the best items I've found in the game so far, kind of. At least as far as rarity goes, but if you notice, the stats on it are bad. They're worse than the armor that I already found a long time ago. The loot in this game is randomly generated in a way that makes me feel kind of disappointed every single time I find it. Because it's just like, oh cool, I found something worse than I already found, uh, like, four hours ago in the game. And it's, it's just full of so many things that just could be better. And I constantly just say to myself, like, but if I keep going, maybe it'll get better. And the answer is it doesn't. It doesn't. This game had had problems on the drawing board, and those have carried through to the actual, you know, end results. And maybe with enough, you know, effort and time, they could actually go back and fix some of these issues. But I just, I don't feel like sticking around long enough to find out. And I don't feel like recommending this game in any way, shape, or form on the bet or assumption that they will somehow polish it into being something amazing. Um, now, if they had originally said, like, hey, this is early access, maybe I would have believed it, but as far as I know, this is this is the finished product. You know, maybe a couple of patches here and there to fix it up, and maybe a DLC, but nothing to retool the entire game systems or structural problems. Which, speaking of, you might notice I've turned the narrator off. I got really tired of him. Uh, there's just... The writing is meaningless. I kept going for kind of slightly edgy bad guy, and it just wasn't worth it. Uh, all the characters would just spend the entire time just shaming me for being a bad dude. And so I eventually just, instead of changing my ways, I just turned off my ears effectively to them and just wanna, didn't want to listen. Oh, by the way, remember that last group that we just fought? Here they are again, but here this time. Which, by the way, I've been in this location twice before. I think there's like four of these radar facilities and they're identical in every single way, every single time. It's... I don't... It's feature creep, it's content creep the game, but shockingly there's not enough content to actually fill it out. This game would have been great if they had made it a fully hand design with like a bunch of really epic set pieces and really epic scenes and kept it like six, seven hours long. Like, that could have been amazing, but they didn't. They made it this big, bloated open world with shockingly nothing in it. In it. So, in fact, it's a big, incredibly flat, and rather empty open world. And I just don't want to play it anymore. Uh, I realize this is a really negative thing to say at the beginning of a video, but I realize that people watch these videos of mine to, uh, to get an impression on a game to say whether or not they're going to pick it up or not. And uh, I realize that me saying this, I'm effectively shooting myself in the foot if I want to continue playing this. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like it would be disingenuous of me not to sit down and say, 
This has such glaring flaws that I do not recommend this. The only way I would recommend this game is if you have the uh, er, uh, Electronic Arts Play Pass or whatever it is. Whatever the subscription service they have, uh, you can get this for, well, not free through it, but you get it as part of the subscription service, and I would say that that would be the time to pick this game up, either that or, like, 20 bucks. I'd say this is a solid 20 to 30 buck game, but even 30 bucks would be a bit steep with the, some of the problems it presents, because ultimately there are other and better games on the market right now. Uh, <laughs> if there's Fallout 76 on the market right now, you have no idea how much it pains me to say that. Which is odd, actually, because I kind of liked Fallout 76, but it, it feels like if I'm using that as the benchmark for that's better than this, then that's that needs a fix. That needs mentioning question mark. I don't know. Anyway, um, I've still got a couple more episodes worth of content on this, and I'll probably just put it up anyway, so you can kind of see the de-evolution and the rest of the stuff available, because really, at this point, you guys have only seen the tutorial, but I didn't want to make this video two hours long, um, so I just wanted to put this caveat up instead, uh, and just, just to say, like, hey, Biomute at, bad. Biomutant has problems. So yeah, that's going to be it for uh, this video. Uh, if you if you liked this in any way, shape, or form, boy, it feels weird to say that. Uh, if you like this in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like, helps more than you know. And if you want to see more, uh, hit subscribe. Or I'm going to tough it out for about three and a half more hours worth of gameplay. Uh, and then I will have a review on it uh, sooner than later. Uh, but I also have a ton of other games to check out too. So, with that, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.